Hi there, Joseph Kursky here with you to talk about mean center. Think of data that can balance on the tip of a pencil. That, that is a mean center calculation. It's the, it's the spatial point, the location at which all my data can actually balance. Now you can compute weighted mean centers. Let's say you had a, a list and a data set of cities and the higher population cities would influence the mean center more so than cities with fewer population. In this case, I've got some data on zebra mussel sightings and invasive species. I'm going to compute the mean center of those. Every zebra mussel sighting is going to receive the same amount of weight, but I do want just particular years and compute the mean center for those particular years. That way I can track how the zebra mussels have migrated based on the analysis of the mean center. So in order to do that, I'm going to first pull up the attributes for the zebra mussels themselves. I'm going to select certain attributes in here that have to do with, hmm, how about the year? So I'm going to create a new selection and I'm going to say, I'm going to get year equals, and here's my unique values, I'm going to compute for 1995. Okay, now it's important to know your data as always, because if I computed this for a year that was very uh, much toward the beginning of the sightings of these zebra mussels, well, I really wouldn't get a good sense of the, the mean center. I would for that year, sure, but there's not that many in the data set for, let's say, 1989. So I'm going to choose 1995 where they really started to take hold, uh, sadly, in waterways. So I've got 380 selected. Now that I've got 380 selected, let's go ahead and pull up the mean center calculation right here. So I've got mean center for the zebra mussels. Uh, you know what? It's a good idea at this point to make sure that you truly have just the years that you think you've got in your data set. So I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to I'm going to go to there's my 1995. So those are highlighted and those are the 380 of the 4800 selected. So now it's time for mean center. The input feature class is going to be my zebra mussels. My output feature class, I don't want it to be a shape file. I actually want to store it inside the geodatabase for my zebra mussels. So I'm going to go to that zebra mussel study geodatabase and I'm going to store it in there. I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it mean center 1995 and it's going to be a feature class inside that geodatabase. Now I could save it as a shapefile but as you know a geodatabase feature class is more powerful so that's what I'm going to do. My weight field, I don't have any weight field. Remember I'm going to weight each of the zebra mussel sightings equally so I don't have a, a weight on it. So that's all I need to do. I'm going to go ahead and compute that right now and I can see the status here that it's actually computing. Now if you want you can actually turn on view processing and see the the process uh, as it's taking place and the, the percent completed. So you can turn that on. Alright so now I'm looking at the zebra mussels from 1995. Those are highlighted in cyan. I of course can change that to whatever color I want and here is my zebra mussels mean center for 1995. Let's go ahead and symbolize that in something uh, that will really indicate visually where that is. So I'm going to turn off the zebra mussels and there's my mean center for 1995. Great. Let's do the same thing for the year 2000 now. If I go ahead and go ahead and open up the attribute table, now I'm going to select by attributes new selection once again, but this time year equals get unique values so I don't have to actually type this in. I can go ahead and say 2000 now. This get unique values is helpful because sometimes you need quotes, sometimes you don't need quotes, and it's, it's better to pick it from a list if possible. So I'm going to close that. I've got 88 cited here, uh, looks like. Let's go ahead and turn that on. Do I have the year 2000 now? Let's go ahead and scroll down, make sure I've got what I think I'm going to have here. So in the year 2000, there is my 88, and they're all in 2000. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at this. Okay, there's my 2000 sightings. Now I'm going to com com compute the mean center for those. So once again, I run mean center. My input feature class is going to be the zebra mussels, just with the 2000 year. My output feature class, I don't want it in a shape file. Remember, I want it in a geodatabase, in the zebra mussel study geodatabase. I'm going to call it mean center 2000, and it's going to be a feature class in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and say OK. Here is the results pane inside 
ArcGIS desktop, specifically an Arc map. So you can see what my inputs were, my environment variables, and so on, and also previous session, what I did even two or three weeks ago in this same session with this MXD. Okay. So just as I did for the 1995, I'm going to go ahead and change the symbol for the 2000 mean center so it is noticeably different and there it is so now I'm going to run mean center one more time and this time I'm going to uh, make sure that I've got the selection correct so let's go ahead and go to the attribute table and let's go ahead and instead of selecting as you can see uh, my 2000 year data I'm going to go ahead and select by attributes and this time going to year equals and I'm going to get unique values once again and go to 2005 and apply that and close and I've got 172 just to verify yeah 2005 that's great so go ahead and close that 2005 I've got 172 selected and there's the pattern that I see right now so I'm going to turn off these mean centers and go ahead and run spatial statistics one more time and this time I'm going to call it I'm going to zebra muscles as my input I don't want to shape file right I want to call it mean center 2005 that is good no weight field no case field no dimension field by the way this case field I used it once for computing the mean center of populations by state for the last hundred years it was really convenient to do that so sometime you might look into that case field it's really quite handy it's fields used to group features um, that really saved me a ton of time when I was doing that all right, we're all good to go, and now we're going to compute that mean center, and there it is. Let's turn off the zebra muscles and change the symbol briefly, and, and there it is. So it started in, as you can see here, let's go ahead and zoom over there. Notice that I've got the base map in here from ArcGIS Online, which gives me a nice context for my study. So there's my uh, mean center from 1995. It looks like it was just at the northwest corner of Lake Erie, and then by 2000 it moved up to the center of uh, the mitten of Michigan, and then by 2005 it migrated over to Lake Michigan. So if we look at, in a separate exercise, I also have you create the directional distribution, but if you look at the directional distribution for 1995 you can see that the mean center is the centroid of that directional ellipse and then by 2000 it was uh, smaller in extent and it shifted in its axes so that is a, a really good thing to study in terms of looking at spatial patterns and then by 2005 it had widened a bit become a little bit more circular reflecting that overall pattern of points so of course you can make these transparent and so on and so forth right by going to properties and then going to uh, the symbology uh, you can do some hash patterns you can also go to display here and make this 50% uh, transparent on the display tab so let's go ahead and turn off these other ones and this is the one I've made transparent so that is computing mean center for different years worth of data yes with zebra muscles but you can use it for other kinds of data that you are computing the mean center a very helpful tool very insightful and I encourage you to give it a try. Thanks.